Ladies and gentlemen, good morning from Mentor, Minnesota. We have a beautiful demo for you today. And speaking of beautiful, watch this. We are live on a new camera inside our Toasty Studios. Outside, Adam and Peter and Ron are ready to show you our machine. Temperature is climbing today here in Mentor. We're on our way up to 33 degrees. But for right now, it's hard, it's cold snow. And uh, Adam, we're gonna do a little mic check, make that sure that your audio is good. You there, Adam? Check, check, can you hear me? I think that was good, Adam. So without further ado, I will let you take it away. Outstanding. Hey, welcome everybody on uh, YouTube and Facebook joining us today. We're here to demo our 2278 Dually on a John Deere skid steer that's been rented or borrowed out to us by RDO Equipment, a part of, partner of ours that sells the Muskox Snowblower in 36 locations. As you watch today, we are a product that sells direct to consumer through the internet. You're gonna see our website and our phone number to contact us with any questions and also through the RDO equipment. Right now, my name is Adam Bergman. My partner, father, and co-founder on the product is Ron Bergman. He's coming in right now with the Muskox Dually. As you can see, the Muskox operates as a normal snowblower. So we'll get into our unique feature where we back drag and blow, but this is giving you an opportunity to see it operating as a traditional snowblower. As it moves forward, we ride on a glide plate. We'll get to see that up and close here after a bit, but it gives you guys a good chance and you can see that rooster tail, that snow is flying as far as the snowblower needs to when it's pushing out snow. That chute you're watching rotates 280 degrees and has a flapper on it so you can help control the trajectory of the snow. Ron's in the machine. I'm gonna have him back up a little bit further. Have Peter come with me, get a chance so you guys can see that muskox dually in action. As you can see today, we're operating our 2278 dually, our dual auger system, which is our most popular um, option by significant amount. So that's just a close up view. Now I'm gonna have Peter switch the camera over and then you guys are gonna see the test area that we're doing today. So we filled in a two stall uh, garage driveway. Um, we've hauled in the snow, as uh, John said earlier, it's gonna warm up today. Right now it's about 10 degrees with about 30 mile an hour winds. So the snow is really packed in. So we've hauled this in. So just to give you guys an idea of the type of snow condition that we're gonna be going through. So now we're gonna have Ron come over with the machine, pull up to the snow pile. I'll have him stop the machine when he gets close to the snow, just so you guys can get an idea of the thickness of the snow that he'll be eating through today. You guys will see we have some side fins on our machine. We'll get into that too, as you guys get to see it operate. So Ron, if you wanna come up to the snow and just kind of stop, and then Peter and I will get in there to get an idea. That gives you guys an idea on the depth of the snow that we'll be eating through today. So this is me sitting down by the machine. I suppose we have 18 to 24 inches of compact snow we'll be going through today. Now we're gonna go ahead and just let the machine do the talking. You guys have questions, please ask us. We're here to be able to do a virtual demo. You're gonna see the outside of the machine operate today, but you're also gonna see inside the cab. So you're gonna know what it feels like to operate a muskox and what Ron is paying attention to as the operator of the machine. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take care of this driveway. We're gonna blow moving forward. Then we're gonna get into our patented back drag feature and back drag and blow at the same time. I'll get out of the way, let Ron get to work. Yeah, you can see now as I'm blowing forward, I keep the uh snowblower in the lower position so I can see the wall or the door or whatever's in front of you and I don't lift and rotate until I get really probably about four feet from the wall you'll see I'm rotating now turn my chute slightly back rotating the front of the blower down so it makes contact you can see I'm blowing in reverse It looks beautiful, Ron. Very nicely done.
And Adam, we are back to you whenever you are ready, sir. Sounds good. You can throw me on John's camera and I'll talk briefly. In the driveway, we're going to get up and close shortly with Peter's camera. But we want to pay attention to how we're scraping the surface. It's a question that a lot of you guys have. Hey, how close can I get down to the surface and really be able to scrape it? We got kind of a unique feature where we don't ride on the steel when we're going in the forward position. So we're not going to scratch the surface. But when we get close to the garage door, we're going to rotate that bucket and we're going to back drag and blow at the same time. Not only are we blowing snow as we're backing up, but we're also using our rubber cutting edge to really get down to the surface. I'm going to switch over to Peter's camera. Peter, you can see the path I'm now walking in. So as you guys can see over here, we probably have 8 to 12 inches of snow close to the garage door. And you guys can see this stamped concrete surface I'm on. You guys have watched previous weeks. We go over this quite often to show we're not going to scratch that surface. So not only did we get closer to the garage door, eliminating some of the shoveling that we'd normally have to do, but we're also getting able to get right down to that surface. And you see, we've really been able to clean it up. So it's eliminating any chance for uh, moisture to stick that can turn into ice. Today's snow conditions, it's very dry where we're shooting. Um, but if it was wet conditions that you could see in other videos, that rubber squeegee works like a squeegee in a shop and we can really eliminate that moisture. We'll and, turn uh, around, we'll look close to the machine here real quick, John, with Peter's camera. Uh -huh. For anybody that's just joining us on YouTube or Facebook, welcome. I'm Adam Bergman with Muskox Snowblowers, the operator, you'll probably wave at us. It's my father and engineer and co-founder on this project, Ron Bergman. Um, we're gonna hop in the cab here shortly and watch as he operates the machine, but just wanted you guys to see we're operating our 2278 dually model that currently retails for $12,995. Sold direct to the consumer by us. Our website will be below and our phone number. We also sell it through RDO Equipment in 36 locations, who has provided a John Deere blower for us today. When we do operate that machine, the machine works on low standard or high flow. We actually customize the muskox for you guys, the operator, you work with us, we get the right motor size for your skid steer. Today we're operating a machine that gives us a high flow option, but we are able to work on standard uh, flow machines and even low flow machines, and we'll work alongside you guys with that. And I wanna to touch on that quick run in a John Deere today. Fantastic machine, but we also have customers that have Kubotas, uh, ASVs, uh, Bobcats, Bobcat Toolcats, uh, any brand of skid steer we do work with uh, currently. So I'm going to go ahead and step out of the camera, um, answer the question for John on another one. And Ron, why don't you back up, get in a position, and we'll back drag and blow one more time. John, I could hop on your camera. I think you had a question maybe for me. Uh, yep. So we actually had just two questions. One okay. is uh, Brad Goss, G-O-S-S, -S, says hello. Says, hey, Brad. So all right. And then the second question is, why is the top auger paddle, uh, why is the top auger a paddle, and why is the bottom an auger? Is there a benefit to a dual auger? So I think they're talking about the internal mechanisms of the box. You want to take care of that, Adam? Yep. Phenomenal question. I'll actually hop with Peter. Have Ron lift up the machine real quick. We had a question about our augers. If you want to lift it up, we'll just get up close and show that off. So as you guys can see, we do a standard serrated edge on our lower cutting edge. The reason we do that is so that we can eat through those ice chunks. So we've had feedback from customers going, hey, I gotta get through this hard compacted snow, very much like what we're doing today. We have found the best option for that is the serrated edge that we use on this machine. This machine probably has 150 hours on it running it this winter, and that allows us to chew through the snow. Then for that second part of the question, you notice that we have a slight different design for our second auger that's on top on our dual. And we use a paddle design. The reason we do that is we found that was the best when we're in our back drag and blow position. So we're getting close to that surface, riding on our rubber cutting edge, that that paddle really most efficiently paddles that snow into our um, blower motor and out through our chute. So that's why we have two different augers. <clears throat> we find that we are the most efficient by offering both of those features. One for when we're moving forward in hard compacted snow, and then the second for when we're back dragging to really help efficiently blow that snow out the machine. Fantastic question. And again, Brad, thanks for uh, thanks for the question today. Ron's gonna go ahead and back up. 
For anybody just joining us, thank you. Now we're in Northwest Minnesota today, going through about 12 to 18 inches of, uh, of snowpack. I'd like to switch that camera over, get in with Ron, and let Ron talk through what he's watching as he's taking care of a driveway at the Muskox Dooley. All right, Ron, you are live to the world. What, uh, what's going on with you? Hello, world. Yeah, you can see I'm blowing uh, compacted snow. Um, I did haul it in this morning, and it's uh, probably like what if a road grader went by and graded up a, a drift of snow. So it's hard and compacted. Of course, we're chewing right through that. Now I'm going to show you the back drag mode. You can see I keep the blower down as I'm moving forward. And when I get close to a wall or a door or whatever, you can see I'll start rotating the shoot slightly back. And then lifting. Now you can see, I can see the front cut edge. And there I go, and I'm lowering it right by the building, rotating down to it contacts the front edge, then back dragging. Beautiful, Ron. That's it. Now watch as Ron Simple. gets to the end, stops the machine slightly, lets the remaining snow that we're pulling up blow out of the machine, lifts it up, and we pull very little snow back with us. Now what I'd like to do is have Ron, will get on Peter's camera, and Ron, if you want to take and go just one, not into the new snow, but this existing snow going up to the door and just showing our back drag feature, because you are able to back drag with this machine without blowing also to really be able to clean up a surface. Now, after doing that, Ron, I'd like you to come up in the forward position like you're coming in. And then I want to slow down and really watch the angle you're at when you rotate the position to get to the back drag feature. So as you can see, Ron's riding on our glide plate right now, which plastic is touching our surface, not steel. Now watch as he slowly rows the, rotates the machine. And go ahead and stop there, Ron. Some operators, when they first got in this blower, they naturally want to over rotate when they get in this position. So they're getting too vertical with it. That's not the ideal position to be in for a few reasons. Uh, one, the visibility increases when you just lightly roll over the machine, but also being in this type of position creates more of a vacuum when you're back dragging and blowing out the snow. So it's important when you guys rotate it that this is the ideal position that you want to be in when you rotate. You're gonna be able to go faster because you don't have to get as vertical. And you can see our rubber cutting edge is right at the type of angle we want it to be at. That's gonna really work as a squeegee when you back drag and blow. For you guys that operate Bobcat tool cats um, that have the single auger or the single arm for the hydraulics, when you rotate a Bobcat tool cat, you end up naturally right in this position when you extend it out. So we got a lot of Bobcat tool cat customers very common question, works great with that machine because it rotates right into this. When you get a skid steer, you can rotate it more, but that's not the ideal spot to be in. This is the ideal location and what you're paying attention to be able to back drag. So Ron, if you want to back, back drag and get out. And uh, Adam? Yeah. We've got a number of people just joining us. I uh, saw our Center. numbers spike a little bit. So if you sure. want to go ahead and say hello to all these fine folks, we'll put you on uh, on Noah's camera there. Sounds fantastic. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining with us. Whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, uh, we appreciate it. My name's Adam Bergman with Muskox Snowblowers. Down below throughout this, you guys are going to see our website and our phone number. We have people standing by to answer questions that you guys have about the machine and see how we can match up the muskox dually which we're running today to your specific machine today we're running it on a john deere high flow machine but i want everybody to know that we sell this to all brands of skid steers with low standard and high flow machines and so we have different motor sizes that best fits your machine we also have different electronic hookups that fits your machine so we work alongside you guys to do that but today as you guys are joining in ask any type of questions I can't physically be with you guys right now, but we're trying to create that atmosphere where you guys get to see this live. You get to see the machine in operation. You get to see all of our unique features. We'll also switch from time to time into the cameras inside the cab so you can see what it's like as an operator. Where we're shooting today, it's about 10 degrees right now. It's gonna warm up later today. Uh, we've had about 30 mile an hour winds and the snow we hauled in. So we're dealing with kind of compacted snow 
And if you guys could see on that camera, we're dealing anywhere from six to 18 inches of snow that we're going through today. So we're gonna go and do our back drag feature again. We've done it a couple times already, but that's what you guys are here to watch. So I'm gonna let the machine do the talking, but please ask any type of questions. That was what we're here for. We've had a couple great ones already. I'm gonna switch over to Peter's camera and Ron, if you wanna just uh, take the machine and run like you're trying to get your driveway taken care of. And uh, Adam, as we're watching Ron here doing this back dragging and blowing feature, uh, we talked a little bit about the glide plate earlier. Uh, yeah. But we haven't yet had a chance to get a good look at that. I think some people are wondering about what that glide plate looks like. And also, you talked a little bit about not riding the metal right on the ground. Um, I think some people are wondering what the mechanism for that might look like. So once Ron's done with the back dragging, uh, would you Fantastic. mind showing us that off? Yep, sounds great. So as you can see, the muskox operates as a normal snowblower in a forward position, but our unique feature is we're able to quickly rotate and create a back drag. As you can see, the snow is still blowing while we're back dragging. It's our unique feature that makes us more efficient, get snow removal done faster than most. And as you can see, as Ron backs up, he lets the machine continue to eat out a little bit of the snow. So we pull just a little bit of snow back with us. Ron, if you just want to real fast go through and clean up a little bit where we got so these guys could see it that are just joining us with its back drag feature. And as you guys can see, we're riding on a rubber squeegee. You guys are seeing the surface we're on. We are on a stamped concrete surface. I talk about that often, but we get a lot of customers going, hey, these people are putting in brand new driveways. We cannot scrape the surface. I'm doing five, 600 HOA accounts and I cannot scratch the surface I'm on. We're riding on rubber and as you guys can see, this is beautiful stamped concrete and we're not scraping on it. A couple of questions John had was in regards to our glide plate. I'm gonna have Peter come with me out here. Ron, I'm gonna have you back up, go up your driveway. Keep going back. And you can stop there. Go ahead, stop there. Go ahead. Go ahead and drop it down. Peter's camera, is it working and live for you, John? Yep, Peter's okay. camera looks absolutely beautiful. I was talking to uh, Noah about a little in-studio sure. oh, no. issue here. No worries. So as you guys can see, we ride on a glide plate. And the reason that we do that is we do not want to ride on our steel cutting edge in our natural forward position. The reason is, is that steel cutting edge, if we ride on it, we end up smoothing off that edge too quickly. So we're always taking it off in the shop and sharpening it. Also, when we ride on that steel cutting edge, we run the risk of scratching our surface, or if we end up in some grass tearing up the yard, or if we hit some buckled concrete, we go through the windshield, or if we go over a driveway, like right now we're on gravel, so this is all gravel underneath here. When we ride on that glide plate, it allows us to go over those type of surfaces, grass, hard surfaces, uh, gravel driveways, and not pick up any of those soft impediments and rip them up. So we ride on a glide plate. It's about 585 square inches of a glide plate we ride on. So what we'll do now with Peter's camera is we'll just watch Ron as he goes in the forward position. And you guys will see how we ride on the glide plate. And I will get into how we can ride on the steel cutting edge when you want. So let's go ahead and watch that riding on its surface. On that 585, uh, square inches of that glide plate. You guys can see a little bit of a white on the bottom. We do have UH, UHMW plastic that we're riding on the edges right now. So we're not scratching the surface if we're on any type of concrete, but that gives you guys a chance to see that. Now Ron's rotating the machine and now we're getting onto our steel cutting edge. So this is important to watch. Before when we were looking at this, you could stop Ron there for a second. This glide plate was on the ground before. Now it's rotated up in the air. I'd say that's about four to six inches. It's rotated in the air. And now we're riding on a steel cutting edge. So if we wanted to break up any ice, shear any type of ice, we're in that position. So we'll watch Ron go forward for a few feet. You guys can see what that looks like as it's pushing forward. Now you can see he's pressing more down on that snow than he was before. And this is allowing us to scrape any type of ice that we have on the hard surface. 
Ron, if you want to come forward with us. Peter, if you want to come. If you want to get your camera on me again, Peter, and let's look at this driveway. If you guys are just joining us, we've gone through a couple passes. We've gone in our forward position, but also our back drag and blow position. As you've seen, we've been able to get close to the garage door, reducing amount of shoveling, but we've also done a great job of really scraping and taking care of this the surface today. Ron, if you want to lift up the machine, and I'm going to get underneath and show you guys our glide plate and our steel cutting edge. If we look at the glide plate, talked about that earlier. It's about 585 square inches. This is the glide plate right here. We double down by able to ride on the cutting edge. So when we're in our forward position, this is what we're riding on rather than the tip of one single little steel cutting edge. This is our natural ride position. Again, that's not to scrape surfaces, rip up grass, pick up rocks when you're going over gravel driveways. But then we have a very unique opportunity with this machine because at any time we can rotate that bucket and ride right on the steel cutting edge. So like I said earlier, this machine probably has 150 hours on it right now. We have not taken off that steel cutting edge. You can still see it's sharp and it looks brand new. So it really lasts a long time because we only use it when we need to. So then we're able to rotate the machine at any time to be able to ride on that steel cutting edge. Ron, if you want to go ahead and drop the machine one more time. And uh, Adam, as Ron's dropping the machine, we've yeah. got another question that might be easy to answer in this current sure. position. Yeah. Uh, so we got someone wondering if there's some sort of plastic on the sides of the blower too. So you talked about the UHMW on the glide plate, uh, yeah. but I think they're talking about the side fins and any plastic that might be on there. You're on Noah's camera, by the way. Yep, sounds fantastic. We'll look up close at that, and that's a great question. Ron, let's lift up the machine one more time like what you're doing. So you can stop right there. So if you guys saw our first prototypes when we came on YouTube and we were testing out this idea, we did not have these side fins on it. We added that when we've started making production models with our 2178 model, have continued it with our 2278 single and our 2278 dual auger machine. So it's a side fin. As we're moving forward with the machine, the reason we stick out farther with this is so that we hold more snow inside the blower. That allows us to increase road speed. A lot of you guys I talk to, you're trying to get from one job to the next job to the next job faster. You're looking at improving road speed. This helps with that because we're holding more snow inside the machine. But it also has plastic to the question that they had. That's the UHMW that we're riding on. It's kind of like a skate guard on a hockey skate would be, but it's a piece of plastic right here because we don't want steel touching our hard surfaces. We don't want to scratch that hard surface. So we have UHMW that we ride on right here. This is a replaceable part. Again, about 140, 150 hours on this machine, still on the same pieces of plastic, and you're able to take those out with a couple bolts and replace them. Very common question is, is this in a standard position? Is this bolt right here holding this side fin in this position? It's holding it in the sense that it's everything screwed together, but it does pivot. It does rotate up and down, and it needs to be able to do that because I'll show up close. When we get to our back drag position, this pivots up, and now it creates a straight edge across here to be able to hold any type of snow in when we're in our back drag and blow position. So snow isn't coming outside the machine. So it pivots up and down with the machine. You come around here, Peter, I'll show up close. We have a weight right here that's inserted so it's not going to break off. And that's our stop when we get to that position. So great question. Uh, great question with that, John. You want to go ahead and drop the machine, Ron, one more time. I want to point out from this angle, and Peter, you can come stand next to me. You can just stop there. For anybody joining us, welcome. My name's Adam Bergman uh, with Muskox Snowblowers. We're here with my dad today. He'll wave away. He's inside the cab. He's the co-founder and the engineer um, behind the, pro the project that we're looking at here today. We are operating on our Muskox 2278 Dually today, which retails for $12,995. Um, we sell it direct to consumer. You'll see our website and phone number. Give us a call. We can answer any questions. We also sell it through RDO equipment in 36 locations. We're operating today with a John Deere high flow machine, but the Muskox Dually works on low standard and high flow machines and with all different brands. So we have for different motor sizes and also electrical hookups to work with your machine. And that's part of what we do at Muskox is we work alongside you to get the machine that best fits your skid steer or your Bobcat Toolcat. Yeah. 
what I wanted to point out here real quick, John, yeah. with Peter's camera, mm -hmm. is we have a lowered chute. So our chute is lowered on purpose. What we have found is that increases the visibility of the operator. As you guys can see that chute in its highest position, as Ron's trying to blow some snow on us, make sure we're paying attention, it's at his knees or lower. So he's got great visibility. He's not needing to look around the chute. So that's mm -hmm. one reason, it's safety, right? So, and you're more efficient, you can move faster, you don't have that obstruction in front of you. But also with that, by lowering that chute, we have found that we plug significantly less. We just don't have as much surface area that that snow needs to climb through on those wet, heavy snow conditions. Today it's super dry, that's nothing that we are concerned about today. But when we do have those days that it's great to make a snowman, it's kind of hard to move snow, chutes plug, and that uh, we've helped in increase that quite significantly. I want to welcome everybody that's joined us. My name's Adam with uh, Muskox. You guys have had some great questions so mm -hmm. far. Please continue to have them come in. Our goal today is for you guys to see this machine running live. We have great videos out there. You guys have probably seen the videos on the internet. They're fantastic. But we wanted to take it the next step and have an opportunity for you guys that are interested in the product to really see it running in real conditions. Today where we're at, it's 10 degrees. It's a dry snow. We've hauled in snow. We got just a little bit left. We've already done the driveway. Ron will be able to make, make another pass, but we've been going through snow that at the smallest is six inches up to 18 inches of snow. So we'll back off and then we'll kind of switch back and forth, John, on the camera. Some Sounds with good. Peters and some inside the cab and mm -hmm. show Ron going ahead and taking care of some snow. Sounds good. And Adam, you've been a, it's, there's been a very informative stream so far and we've got about five minutes left. So as Ron's going ahead and uh, doing that, we're watching him back dragging clear snow. We probably have time for one or maybe two more features, but uh, people have been with us the entire time. And like I said, we're coming up on 1130 here. Um, and uh, so we probably have time for one more feature. Sure. Beautiful rooster tail, Ron. Gorgeous rooster tail. So as Ron's blowing that snow, you guys are getting an idea. Everybody asks how far does that snow blow? As you can see, it's blowing as far as we want it to. The musk ox works as a traditional snow blower, and that's what we're showing off right now. We're riding on that glide plate we talked about. So we're actually going over gravel. So we're not picking up the rocks, but we're operating as a normal snowblower would, just pushing forward before we get into our back drag and blow feature. We're currently going through snow that's probably pushing up to uh, 18 inches of hard compacted snow. So this stuff was all hauled in, packed down to really create that difficult type of condition um, that we face. Unfortunately, we can't get the wet, heavy snow in today. Uh, it's 10 degrees. It's been 30 below recently where we're at. So we don't have any of that wet, heavy snow, but that'll come later in the season for you guys to see. So you guys can see Ron is back dragging. Common question, while you back drag, is it blowing? As you can see, there's a ton of snow coming out of the machine. So it is back dragging and blowing at the same time. And look at all that snow flying out as he's back dragging. Looks beautiful, Adam. And then we'll go ahead with Ron as he's cleaning that out. I don't know the best camera. Maybe Peter, you and I can back up, come in here and watch Ron. He's coming forward. He's blowing in the traditional position. Now he's just coming up to show off the back drag feature. He's getting closer to that garage door. He's back dragging, riding on our rubber squeegee. I talk about that a lot. But as you guys could see with Peter's camera here shortly, as we let Ron blow. Mm -hmm. Looks like he'll make one more pass for us. Watch as he rotates the machine, per puts it in the right angle. Look at how he's not overly vertical with it. He just rolls that edge. That allows you guys to do it a lot faster and allows the squeegee to work the way it needs to. All right, Ron, you can stop. Peter, I'm going to have you walk back by, actually, we're going to get the machine out of the shot. Peter, why don't you walk? over by the machine, just look at me and look at the driveway. So I want you guys to take a look. We've gone through the muskox dually and cleaned up the driveway, right? So we're live today. We're going back and forth trying to show off the features. When we're traditionally doing a driveway like this, we're getting it done in about two, maybe three minutes when we're running at full speed and we're not in front of cameras and we're just trying to clean up the driveway. Um, as you guys can see, we started off with a minimum of six inches up to about 18 or so inches of snow. We got this driveway cleaned, but we're also able to do it over stamped concrete. We didn't scratch the surface because we ride on plastic components 
when we're in our forward position. And then when we get in our back drag position, we get aggressive onto this hard surface. We're riding on a rubber cutting edge. I think John said I had a chance to show off one more feature and I wanna show up close with that rubber cutting edge. So it's a rubber cutting edge that we ride on top. On the bottom, it's steel, but on the top, we're riding on this rubber cutting edge. And with this machine, a very common question, hey, how often am I gonna go through that rubber? This has got 140, 150 hours into it. We haven't even rotated it yet. Each one of these screws can come out and the rubber actually slides up and down to uh, make longer life on the rubber. So we're able to slide up and down, but we're also able to rotate it four different times. So this rubber cutting edge lasts a long time for us. So I want you guys to see that up close. For anybody just joining us, we're getting towards the end of the video. We took care of our driveway. You're gonna be able to shortly download and watch this video again, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook. But we'll just come around the machine one more time with Peter's camera. You guys can see it up close. What we're operating today is the Muskox 2278 Dually. This is our most popular size. So you can see we have two different types of augers in the machine. We have their serrated edge on our main auger that allows us to eat through ice. And then we use a paddle on top that also has teeth to help eat through that ice. But that paddle design allows us to really eat up that snow when our back drag and back drag and blow position. Some of you guys that are watching right now are probably noticing on that main auger, we do operate with a slip clutch. So there is no shear pins, no shear bolts. So on cold days, you don't gotta worry about that. It's a hydraulic slip clutch that we operate. And then it's our upper auger that runs off a sprocket and a chain, as you guys can see in the corner. And that's just for that, that upper auger. So that's, you guys are seeing the machine up close, mm -hmm. touched on a lot of the features with it. I'll turn over to uh, Noah's camera. And before we send Ron off, was there any other questions uh, that came up, John, that we wanted to address? Or No other questions have come up, Adam. I think we did a very, very thorough job today. And yep, you're, whatever you want to say, I think we're, I think we did it. I think we got it covered. Awesome. What we'll do for the few still watching with us have joined the whole time. Ron, if you want to just come back and just back drag a couple of times over the driveway, we don't have any more snow to pick up, but we'll just watch the machine. You guys will see it in the background over my shoulder as Ron's coming in. And Ron, why don't you speed it up and go kind of fast like you're just back dragging the driveway we're in. Oh, Ron, let's uh, put your mic on here. We're going to put your mic on. Okay, now you're live to the world, Ron. Okay, I'm just cleaning up here. See, you can notice I don't have the floor running. I can go in and act like it's a bucket and back drag and clean up some snow. Say if there was a uh, car or something in the way, see, I'll come forward here, get up by their camera equipment, get everybody all nervous. We, we appreciate it, Ron. You, you always keep us back on our toes. Clean up, eliminate uh, shoveling and that. And then I am going to rotate and I'll blow snow as I'm leaving and we'll uh, catch you all next week. Thank you. Wonderful. And Adam, we'll get you on Noah's camera here as uh, as Peter tracks, tracks our departure here. Beautiful. All right, Adam, whenever you are ready. Yeah. Everybody thanks. Hey, every, every operation's unique. Some of you guys watching today are doing five, 600 HOAs. Some of you guys are farmers that are looking at taking care of your farmstead right now. Some of you guys are trying to do a lot of driveways in the communities you live in. And some of you guys are joining and are running, working for cities, are working for school districts, all sorts of different applications where you're trying to blow snow. Uh, we have a machine that is designed for all of the above kind of conditions. And the best thing we get an opportunity to do is get a chance to talk to you guys and find if we're a fit for your operation. Our machine does work on low standard and high flow machines. Super common question, 17 gallons to 45 gallons per minute. And we work with all brands of skid steers, including Bobcat Toolcats with the single arm. But reach out to us um, and we have different references of basically every brand that's currently using a muskox snowblower and basically every application you can think of from Alaska to Maine that people are currently using this model. Today we are showing off our muskox 2278 with a John Deere that we have from RDO Equipment. Um, that's a high flow machine that we're running, but again, it runs anything from 17 to 45 gallons a minute. Just appreciate you guys jumping on today. We'll be live again next week at 11. Download this video and watch. If any type of questions, reach out to us. We're here to, uh, to help out and help make your season more efficient, more profitable. So everybody, thanks for joining on today. Have a fantastic week. And John, I think that's all I got.
Wonderful, Adam. Thanks so much. We'll go ahead and say that's a wrap on you. Ladies and gentlemen, you will see our muskox information is on your screen right now. And we are also seeing Ron. Looks like Ron is uh, snow blowing the neighbor's house right now. So if you happen to decide to move near Muskox HQ, that might be uh, an unintended benefit of living in this area is that you will get to enjoy free snow removal uh, and very efficient snow removal. But I'm going to go ahead and put up our website and phone number over Ron. And um, ladies and gentlemen, you have a fantastic day. We will see you again in the future. And again, as Adam said, sales staff is always standing by ready to answer any questions you have about the muskox all right folks that is it for me we will send you off until next week take care everybody bye-bye